Who doesn't love bunnies? In the world of rabbit care, there's so many misconceptions. No, 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 don't hold your rabbit like that. The bunny's in shock. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a little human. I'll say it before, but I'll say it again. Do not give your rabbit a bath. Like, people don't understand that this rabbit is under immense, immense stress and pain. In order for them to scream, something severely terrifying has to occur. I'll show the kids. <laughs> so, some people may misinterpret a rabbit's fear responses as something positive when it's not the case. There's such a lack of education when it comes to rabbit welfare and rabbit care. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. This is Prince. He's an old bunny. He turns 12 in just a couple of weeks. Domestic rabbits live for anywhere from 8 to 12 years, uh, depending on the breed, and Prince is almost 12, like I said, so he's at the upper end of that. Prince is my best buddy. I get to spend all day with him. It's the best part of every day. A typical day with Prince consists of several hours of supervised exercise time, and then a lot of care for him, such as giving him painkillers. At Prince's age, he does have a lot of health issues. Um, the primary one is arthritis. He's got bad arthritis in his back and then going down to his hips, which has led to a lot of other problems. He's experienced a lot of muscle loss because of it, so that affects his balance and the way he sits, which can lead to sores on his feet, and it can also affect the way he goes to the bathroom, which then leads to urinary tract problems and digestive problems, so it's kind of like a web of all these things stemming from the arthritis. When we first got rabbits, I wish we'd known that just because something in the pet store has a picture of a rabbit on it, it doesn't actually mean that it's good for rabbits. It, it actually took a lot of research and time before we could figure out what was actually good for rabbits and what just happened to have a picture of a rabbit on it at the pet store. Rabbits walk a fine line because on one hand they're sociable creatures and they need tons of time and energy and attention but at the same time, they're prey animals, so they're not going to be as confident engaging with you and playing with you and bonding with you as, say, a cat or a dog might. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of time for them to actually feel comfortable around you and to build up that trust. Unfortunately, a lot of products today are still tested on animals and on rabbits, just like Prince. And that just didn't really sit well with me, to have this little bunny who I love so much and then be buying products that were tested on animals in really terrible ways. So I started researching products and companies just to make sure the stuff I was buying was cruelty free. And I think that's a really easy step that anyone can take just to help rabbits and other animals that are tested on. It's literally just a quick Google search, does this company test on animals? And then you're good to go. So there's really, in my opinion, no excuse not to do it when there's so many options out there. Basically just educating yourself about the ways in which rabbits are exploited or abused to make sure that you don't partake in that even unknowingly. In 2008 in Kelowna, they had a crazy bunny population. They were breeding uh, like rabbits do. And n people were just kept dropping their bunnies off. And although people love to go down there and see them and feed them and, and uh, interact with them, uh, it wasn't good for the bunnies. They were getting run over. Dogs were catching them. Um, other predators were catching them. They were going through all the beautiful gardens that people had for their businesses. So the city decided to cull them. We were contacted to see if we could take, catch some bunnies. 
which we did. And then I kind of just fell in love with bunnies and I don't know what happened, but now we have a sanctuary. Domestic rabbits turn into feral rabbits very quickly. They have babies starting at four and five months. They can have babies. They have them every 31 to 33 days. So the populations explode incredibly quickly. It's sure a lot easier to catch, you know, two little bunnies running around outside than it is to catch a colony. And a colony can be an easy 60 bunnies and up. And then you've got to spay and neuter them all. And you've got to find somebody who will take them. It's, um, it's really a difficult situation. People think it's okay to set the rabbits free because they think the rabbits will do well outside. But these domestic rabbits are not like wild rabbits. Uh, they just don't have the same kind of coping skills that a wild rabbit has. Rabbits are very much impulse pets. Their impulse purchases, they're cute, they're tiny. The kids are screaming when they see them in the pet store that they want them. Um, and then the parents, they go, what, you know, what can the harm be? We'll just, get a, we'll just get a bunny or two. So they don't realize how much cleanup there is, how much work there is with a, with a rabbit. They were so cute, you just had to have it. But now you don't want it anymore. So the easiest thing to do is just open up the door and tell the kids, oh, I don't know, the bunny escaped. <laughs> They're a prey animal. So when you go and you pick a bunny up, they think that it, you're an eagle or some bigger animal. So they're not as uh, interactive as a cat or a dog. And they also are, according to my vet, one of the most expensive animals uh, to have as a, as a family member. I do think rabbits definitely are misunderstood. People don't do their research on them. They don't understand what kind of an animal a rabbit is. Rabbits are not rodents, they're actually lagomorphs. And although that doesn't seem like, you know, who cares whether they're a lagomorph or a rodent, it just means that rabbits are a specific breed unto themselves. They're not like rodents. They have different problems and different strengths. My advice if somebody wanted to get a rabbit is really do your research. Uh, call me <laughs> and I will walk you through it. It's not that people shouldn't get rabbits as family members, but they should make sure it's going to be the right fit for their family. I love our rabbits and they're just a very gentle, easygoing um, animal that just wants to live a bunny life. I have a lot of animals. I don't have any other animals that are anything like the rabbits. They're just um, a very unique, a very unique species. So we're sitting here today in Jericho Beach Park and I've been coming here since the 1980s. There's uh, swimming to be had, there are lots of trails. There were always rabbits scampering around, especially in and near the tennis courts and near the sailing center where I used to sail. Sometimes you'd see hundreds of them. Generally, they are abandoned pets that have been left to breed. And there are signs up everywhere that talk about this being an ecologically sensitive area. And yet people are just abandoning rabbits. You see people frequently feeding rabbits, bringing all kinds of food down for the rabbits, which is illegal and shouldn't be done. They are left out here without health care, without access to fresh food and water on a regular basis. They are subject to killings regularly by coyotes and raccoons. And they are basically out in the wild where they're actually domesticated pets that have been thrown into the wild. So they really can't fend for themselves. It's not, it's not gonna be a storybook ending like Peter Rabbit. It is a tragic ending for most rabbits. It is illegal to abandon your animals. This is a form of cruelty, but yet a lot of people are still doing it. You wouldn't think about doing that to your cat or dog as readily as you would for a rabbit, but there's a kind of a prejudice that rabbits suffer from that they're more disposable, which is completely incorrect. And it's also kind of reflected in the law. 
Part of the difficulty with rabbits is they are classified under so many different laws. And then it becomes an issue where do the wildlife laws apply here? And are these rabbits subject to culling? I don't believe in culling is a way to control populations in the first place. Basically, the animals really need to be treated to vet care and they need to be rehomed as pets, not be treated as wildlife. I wrote an article for the Lawyer's Daily. The section that I want to quote from was the sad life of a rabbit. And I wrote here, quote, I cannot think of another animal quite like the unfortunate rabbit who is at the intersection of science as a lab test animal, agriculture as an intensely farmed rabbit meat, thirdly for fashion, for fur garments and trinkets, entertainment such as show rabbits and vermin as pests. The sad roles that rabbits have been forced to play is, is no fault of their own. They're, they're small, timid animals. They're easily preyed upon both by other wildlife and by humans. They are treated incredibly badly because of the intersection of all the ways that they can be used and abused. In June 2019, Canada came really close to passing um, a bill to ban animal cosmetic testing and that would have really benefited rabbits. Unfortunately, the bill ended up not passing at the last minute. Canada could have been the 40th country to ban animal testing if the law had passed in 2019. So it's not like other laws and other countries haven't happened. They have. I mean, Canada's really far behind on that one. There's lots of different ways of uh, doing testing without harming animals. If every single municipality across the board said we are not going to sell rabbits, cats and dogs in pet stores. That would be huge. Why? Because it would signal to the public that animals are not commodities. That you can't just go to the mall one day and pick up a rabbit, pick up a cat, just on an impulse. Don't buy a pet in the first place. You should always be adopting, not shopping for pets. Pets are not commodities. Animals should not be classified as commodities or things under the law. They're not disposable to be thrown away once you're finished with them. If people are going to get a rabbit, they should go to a reputable shelter. How do animals get access to justice? How do these animals, any animal that is used by humans, how are they able to have any kind of rights and have those enforced? Um, humans need to take responsibility. So really, what it comes down to is are humans going to take responsibility for the damage that they're inflicting on animals? And that includes rabbits. So the, the greatest predator of a rabbit is probably not that raccoon, but is probably a human. right hand to support her lower half and then tucking my left hand under her chest. Grass hay should be provided to your rabbit 24-7 at all times. Then I just have some miscellaneous toys all around their cage. So if you find a baby bunny like that, please leave it alone. At Adopt a Bunny Rabbit Inc where she'll get spayed and be placed up for adoption. For the last 60 years, CFHS has worked on behalf of our members to end animal cruelty, improve animal protection, and promote the humane treatment of all animals. Most of all, we just want to help these little guys. Uh, they are little animals with no voices and they need our voice to help them.